Your calls, your stories. Mornings on BBC Radio Scotland. Now, the wind and the rain may have dampened your spirits this morning, but our so-called summer has had a tremendous impact on renewable energy here in Scotland, with the electricity produced by wind turbines increasing 50% on last year. But how much does renewable energy rely on the weather? Well, US President Barack Obama has also unveiled the biggest pledge in tackling climate change by any US president. But what will it mean for renewable energy worldwide? We're joined this morning by Ross Blamier. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Josh. Uh, He's a senior policy manager at Scottish Renewables and independent energy advisor Richard Killick. Richard and Josh, very good morning. Good morning. Let me come to you first of all, Josh. Um, How much does renewable energy depend on the weather? Well, renewable energy works because of the weather. Um, So when the wind's blowing, our wind turbines are producing power. When it's sunny, our solar panels will produce power. And when it's raining, uh, our hydropower will be producing for us. So luckily in Scotland, you could say um, we've got a variety of, of sources of power because of our changeable weather, you might say, and um, therefore it's a great place for renewable energy to thrive. But what happens when you get a nice, warm, uh, breezy, dry April, when the sun's not particularly bright in the sky, it's not particularly hot, the rainfall might not be that high, despite the old myth about April shower, I think we had a lovely April this year, Mm. people are sitting out in their gardens just enjoying the light breeze, so your turbines aren't turning, your hydro plants might not be gurgling away, and you're certainly, well, maybe not getting much heat in your solar panels, what do you do then? Well, it's important then to look at the, the long term. So although we've had a good July for renewable energy, if we look back to last year as a whole, we can see how renewables did over the entire year, which is more important, really. Um, and last year, for the first time, uh, renewable energy was Scotland's biggest source of power. So renewables produced more power than nuclear, more power than gas, and more power than coal as well. So over a year, we are producing a, a huge amount of electricity for Scotland. How sustainable is that for Scotland, Josh? Well, um, we think it's, it's very sustainable and actually essential. You know, um, the industry now um, uh, supports around 21,000 jobs in Scotland. Um, we're helping to uh, mitigate against over 12 million tonnes in CO2, which is obviously helping to uh, guard against the effects of climate change. And in the long term, the cost of climate change um, is certainly far greater than the cost of investing in renewable energy. Richard, let's bring you in here, Richard Gillick, Independent Energy Advisor. If renewable energy is so dependent on the weather here in Scotland, what, what alternatives do you recommend that we should be using? Well, the wind power certainly um, has done, done us very well in July. Uh, it's very good news, not too little wind, uh, not too much wind. And at the same time, uh, all the rain that comes with it Um, clears the sky. So when the sun does come out, your solar panels actually generate uh, more or less at full power, whereas on a hazy day they might only get up to three quarters their normal power. So um, wind and rain isn't necessarily bad for solar. What, um, What would we be able to do to sustain such alternatives? Well, the, the, the main alternative that I'm very keen on is tidal power. Because the one advantage of tidal power is that it's 100% predictable. Um, You know more or less exactly what you're going to get out of your turbines at any hour of the day. Admittedly, there are periods when there is uh, no flow of water, when the tide changes. Um, But that can be catered by the fact that we've got um, powerful tidal flows uh, around the north coast of Scotland and the west coast. Um, And between them, they can produce a fairly constant um, supply of power. And that's really uh, must be one of our longer term uh, renewable energy. How economic uh, is it when we're talking about tidal power? Uh, well, at the moment, um, we're in the very uh, the, the comparatively early stages uh, where um, the, quite a bit of cost is involved without much output. Um, getting to the first uh, few uh, machines um, on the seabed and seeing um, uh, how reliable they are and using them as experimental um, outputs. Um, so at the moment, um, the, the costs are high um, and the, the start-up costs are high. Mm-hmm. So how do we encourage people to invest in something that they might not see a return in for some time? Um, that probably is the, is the fundamental question um, for uh, renewable energy uh, in the, for the tidal aspects. Um, difficult to 
um, uh, see a way around that. And the immediate answer, of course, is um, government subsidies. Mm -hmm. Josh, let me pick up on the point that I mentioned earlier. Uh, President Obama, of course, pledged his clean power bill. What effect do you think that that will have on renewable energy worldwide? I think it could have a, a couple of really positive effects. Um, first of all, if, if, if the US does choose to take forward um, President Obama's plan and, and invest in more renewable energy, then it's likely to bring down the cost of those renewables globally. Um, the more investment there are, generally, the more uh, cost comes down. We've but seen that. What, uh, what time scale do you think we could be looking at here? Just well, because the president says this is what we're going to do, it doesn't mean to say the next day it's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And he, he's got a big job to try and push through those plans mm. um, back in the US. Um, but even, even politically making that statement is a positive thing. You know, he's, he's pointed out the, mm. the key aspects that um, this generation has to really invest in renewable energy now. You've, you've got to understand that the costs of not doing something are far greater than the cost of investing in renewables. Mm -hmm. And I think the benefits for the industry are a potential to lower costs quite quickly, actually. We've seen the cost of solar panels come down rapidly over the last five years, and that's largely due to um, a growth in, in Chinese manufacturing, actually, and the efficiencies created there. So these things can happen pretty quickly if investments made at a global level. No, I think that, that's key, is, as uh, Richard was pointing out. It's all about investment. Richard, what, what have you made of President Obama's pledge? Well, <coughs> delighted to see America um, uh, taking uh, this, such a positive uh, lead. Um, admittedly, um, in the past, they've been hesitant um, and this is really America, I think, playing catch-up now. Um, but um, it, that is substantially good news um, on, a, on a worldwide scene. Um, of course, in Scotland here, we have uh, pretty well led um, in the uh, drive for uh, renewables in terms of wind power. Um, and uh, uh, America, um, I think, is beginning to catch up. Um, there's pity the shale of uh, gas um, um, eased their need for external power um, and perhaps delayed uh, the, the push uh, for renewables. But nevertheless, well, you say it thumbs up to America and, uh, you know, you applaud President Obama for, for his moves. Nevertheless, we have the likes of India and China churning out pollutants, um, perhaps uh, using energy way in excess of anything that we can ever imagine. Uh, yes, um, and I think we've got to remember that every barrel of oil pumped out of the earth and burnt um, is carbon dioxide. And so we will not, stop, not be able to reduce the carbon dioxide significantly in the atmosphere um, until we are able to cut back on the amount of oil we actually dig out of the earth, pump out of the earth and burn. Josh, do you think there's something we could all be doing here? I mean, could, could you see a day that each garden in Scotland is going to have a wind turbine sitting in the, in the backyard or sitting on the roof of our homes? Yeah, there's been an opportunity for a, for a few years now uh, through a, a government scheme called the Feed-In Tariff to invest in domestic renewable energy. Um, so you, you'll have seen over recent years the number of solar panels on, on roofs increasing. Um, certainly some people, if, if there's land available, often you'll see a smaller scale wind turbine there. So things are already already happening across the country. And to, to, to the critics who say that they're a blight in the landscape, they're ruining our scenery, what do you say to them? Well, I, I say it's a really important industry for Scotland. Um, as I said, supporting 21,000 jobs, an investment of over a billion pounds in the last three years, um, and really a, a potential for Scotland to, to take a lead on the world stage um, and to begin to even export not only our electricity potentially, um, but also our expertise in, in developing these technologies. As has been pointed out, our marine energy, if we find the commercial solution to that um, problem, then we may well find ourselves in a position as being a world leader and having a, an industry which we can export across the globe. Okay, to Josh and to Richard, many thanks indeed for joining us this morning.